and Sprinkle, and I have a special treat for you, the Dreamweaver Crackle Embossing Paste. And this is so much fun. I have some shortcuts, as well as some tricks how to fix any boo-boos. And we're gonna be doing it on black cardstock and using some of Sparkle and Sprinkle Embossing Paste, Embossing Paste, and Embossing Powders. So I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so to get started, I am going to take my large feather stencil here. I know I've used this on other videos, and but I just don't have a lot of large open space stencils, so I'm gonna use it again. Um, so you can do this two ways. If you're a little bit more OCD, you can tape this all down. I will make a terrible house painter because I am not good with all the prep work. I like quick and simple. So I'm gonna take my Crackle Embossing Paste by Dreamweavers, and I'm gonna get a good amount on my little palette knife here. And this is a plastic one. I have a metal one too that I use sometimes if I haven't cleaned my plastic one quick enough. And I am just gonna go ahead and hold it down with my fingers, especially a stencil like this. It has a lot of open space. It has a lot of this space on the side, so you have a good amount of extra space to put your fingers. Obviously, if you've got a very large stencil, you um, it's probably best if you tape it down. So I am totally breaking all the rules and I am putting big amounts of the stencil paste over the whole thing before I start spreading it down. That way I have no open spaces left that weren't hit with the actual embossing paste. So now I'm gonna take my palette knife and I am just going to hold it at an angle. So I had it at about a 45 degree angle and pushed out all of the stuff. Now, what you wanna make sure of is you hold it down on one end and just lift it on the other. And then you end up with a really nice, smooth, fully covered stencil design. So like I said, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, what you can do is create uh, you can tape it with the reusable tape, like either the painter's tape or the scotch removable tape, and you can create a hinge on top and do it after, up and down. But then you're taking all the tape off. Um, what you need to do right away is clean this. So I have a little water dish here, and I'm sticking that in there, and then I'm just going to run over to my sink and clean it because we're going to need that for the second part. And then I'm just going to wipe off the additional stencil paste, and then you need to clean the top of your container. If you just close this up, you're gonna get a lot of these little dried up pieces, and sometimes the they actually glue down, so you wanna make sure you clean your the top rim of your container before you screw it back on, like I just did. Okay, so you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and let this dry for at least an hour, maybe two hours. And what it recommends on the actual instructions for this is doing your first coat with black and then coming in and doing a second coat with the crackle. I have found, especially for card making, that if I just do a coat of the crackle, you get this really cool crackle technique. So you're saving, you're scraping about two hours off of the process if you just do one coat of the crackle. I do love the black stencil paste. I just use it on its own as well or for layering. So set this aside, let this dry. I have my dry one here. Um, I'm also gonna show you guys some tips. Here are some other ones. Remember, we're cutting it out. Your paper will tend to curl. I just use my fingers to work the paper so it's not curled as much. You can even run it on the corner of your desk. If by chance you um, some of your stencil lines bled under, I just take a black permanent pen and just trace over my lines. So then you don't have to be so concerned and you can just go and trace around the whole thing and give yourself a nice solid black outlining again versus trashing your hard work. We don't like that. So I'm just gonna go and trace around this whole thing and then you'll never know that you had edges that bled down so you can see how nice and crisp that looks again. So you can actually save something like this even though you might think you did not the best job and you had a lot of bleeding under the stencils. You can save it and turn it into this by just taking your black marker and tracing around it if you're on black paper obviously. Um, if you're on different color paper use a different color marker. 
All right, so what I'm going to do next, all right, so once that is all dry, go ahead and clean your stencil and dry it off because we're going to reuse it again. So there's two ways that you can add embossing powder to your stencil. You can actually do it while the paste is still wet. So I could have gone ahead and sprinkled embossing powder over the whole thing and heat set it while it's still wet. Or you can have it dry like I did with this one and then I'm going to go over it with my Versamark. So I am simply going to start at the top and just go over the whole thing with my Versamark ink pad. And it's okay if it gets on the edges of your paper because we're going to be cutting this design out. So make sure that is nice and inked up. You can also take your re-inker, um, spill a little bit out, and use a stipple brush if that will be easier for you than using your ink pad. So there's two ways to ink that up with your Versamark. Now what I'm going to do is start with my silver embossing powder, and I'm just going to go along my edges here. Take my coffee filter. So we've inked it with our Versamark. Now I'm going to take my silver embossing powder, and I think this is detail silver just because I had that available. And I'm just kind of going around the edges, which is going to create that. All right, so once you've got your silver embossing powder along the tips, instead of letting it slide down, I'm going to flip it. So I did a nice little flip. And once again, don't worry about embossing powder all around the edge because we're going to be fussy cutting this out. And then I'm going to take my lime green and I hit this guy with the lime green embossing powder and then I did the larger one with the lime green and then the beach cruiser and last but not least the raspberry tart embossing powder so like I said you can pour your embossing powder on while it is still wet or you could do this technique when it's still dry and I'll show you some samples when it's all dry. So I'll show you some samples of actually what it looks like when you do this to the wet stencil paste. All right, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and heat set. And that is your really cool outcome. So what I did is I cut all around it, stuck a feather on the back, used this thank you so very much, and then this awesome stamp set to create my background paper. So I stamped again with the key lime, the beach cruiser, and the coffee stain from this really cool stamp set, which I love. It's a great handy tool to have around. Um, okay, so a couple other things really neat that you can do with your stencil paste. What I did here is I actually used the stencil first and used some of these awesome Memento dye inks and I sponged through the stencil, stencil first to create the background. Then I laid the stencil over again and did the crackle over the stencil. So that's another fun, here's two samples of that. Here it is on the leaves. So I just created a couple samples for you guys so you could see different things that you could do with your crackle embossing paste. This one here, I went ahead and put the butterfly crackle on and while it was still wet, I added the Pearl X mica powder. So I just took a dry brush and sprinkled it over my design and it created this beautiful shimmer. I don't know how well you can see that, but it is just gorgeous. All right, this guy here, I laid the stencil paste down and then I put my embossing powders on it while it was still wet. And then what you do is you let that dry for the allotted amount of time for like an hour or so and then you go and heat set. And here is another sample of that on the crackle. Isn't that beautiful? So that is the stencil paste through the stencil. Remove your stencil, sprinkle on your gold embossing powder, let that dry and then heat set and you get this beautiful embossed and crackle finish all together. And then last but not least, a very fun and simple thing to do is to add glitter to it. So I didn't have any of the plain white stencil paste, so all of this was done on the crackle. And with the glitter over it, you can't even really see the crackle through it. So you can use that for two purposes, doing the solid white 
as well as the crackle. Thank you guys so much. Let me know if you have any comments and I look forward to seeing you next week.